This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by Omnisend, the top-rated email and SMS marketing platform for WordPress. More than 100,000 merchants use Omnisend every day to grow their audience and sales. Ready to start building campaigns that really sell? Find out more at www.omnisend.com. And by GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. Hey, hey, hey. Hi there, Sabrina. How are you doing? Hello. Hi, Nathan. Um, I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Nice to have you back. We're uh, we're on the sixth, I believe, sixth episode of our Speed It Up show. Sabrina has joined us on many, many previous occasions to talk about speeding up your, well, any old site, really. It doesn't have to be a WordPress site. I guess WordPress fits the bill in many scenarios, but it doesn't have to be WordPress. Um, we don't really have a, a particular agenda today. We didn't have a, a, a site that was submitted, so we can't share the screens and show one that has been submitted. But I might as well go through that and explain how, if you did wish to have Sabrina look at your website, it would be uh, possible for you to do that. So let me just share that experience. If you if you want to do that, very simple, head to this URL. It's pretty straightforward. Go to wpbuilds.com forward slash speed. And over there is a form. It'll take you no more than a minute, maybe a couple of minutes to fill out. Uh, giving some basic details about, you know, what the website is and what you would like Sabrina to look at and whether or not you wanted to get into the WordPress backend or any of that kind of stuff. So wpbuilds.com forward slash speed. If you're joining us today and you want to make some comments, I can see that there's uh, somebody's already done that. Mike. Hi there, Mike. Very nice to have you with us once again. Um, if, like Mike, you want to make a comment, that's totally possible, depending on where you are, depends upon how you're going to manage that. But basically, the easiest place to go of all is to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Over there, you've got a couple of options. You can either be logged into a Google account. YouTube, basically, is the comments. That's in the box to the right. But if you're on a mobile, it'll be underneath. Or if you... Look inside the video, top right of the video, uh, the other right, Nathan. Uh, <laughs> if you look top right on the video, you'll see a little black box. I think it says live chat or something. It's a button at the top. Click that, and you don't have to be logged into anything. You just type in your name and type in your comments so you can do that. One other option is if you're on Facebook, then we need to have permission. Uh, and in order to do that, head to wave.video forward slash live forward slash Facebook, and that will allow us to see who you are. Okay, so yes, please go share the stream, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. All right, Sabrina, I have builders. They are coming and going. I don't know whether they're going to be here during this presentation or not. So there's a high chance that if they do show up and start banging things, it'll be very loud. So I will probably put my mic on mute at various different moments. <laughs> if I do that and I fail to, you know, if my mouth starts moving and no words come out, just say, you're on mute. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll endeavor to come back in. So what's, up, what's the plan today, Sabrina? So the plan today uh, is not to look at someone's website because we don't have, sadly, one, but um, the idea of today's topic came to me after the event, uh, event I was invited to, um, to speak at uh, in the SEC event uh, last uh, week. We were talking about uh, WooCommerce backend performance. And the host of this event, Alexander Savkovich, uh, he worked many years in um, uh, hosting um, uh, in hosting companies. And what he said as an insider information, that's what I was always thinking, but he confirmed that at, by his experience, 99% of people using hosting are not using resources that are paying for. They are overpaying 
for uh, what they need. They are paying what they for what they don't really need. And then there is this one percent of people who desperately need more resources, <laughs> but <laughs> but they're not having them. And yeah. then there is a small small amount of people who have exactly what they need. And I'm thinking it would be good to talk today about how to uh, reduce costs for hosting. Good because, idea. Yeah. Because usually when people ask, like, if you Google how to reduce costs for hosting, it will be an article, a blog post on some hosting provider comparing their plans yeah. to other yeah. hosting providers' yeah. plans and so on and so forth. But this is not really the answer. This is not the answer. And we're going to talk about how to really um, shorten your uh, budget on hosting. And for that, we will start with um, what usual hosting plan um, includes and what you're paying for usually. So we won't be touching uh, like uh, how many domains name you can use and so on and so forth, only about resources. Usually there are two basic things, two main things there. First thing is disk space that you are using, this number one. And another one, actual resources, um, uh, CPU and memory. Um, that you are using. Of course, there are a lot of a lot more technical details, uh, um, in-out rate, and everything, and so on and so forth. But usually, when you compare plans, uh, you can see how the plan price grows uh, based on these resources. How many space you have? What uh, is the um, amount of uh, memory that you have? And how many uh, server power you have? And We'll talk today how to reduce usage of uh, server resources and space. Because there are um, uh, cases often when you need more space and you buy a um, high tier because you need more space, but you're not using resources that you're having with it. Maybe you can free up space somehow and save those money. Or vice versa, uh, something forcing something on your website is forcing you uh, to upgrade here because you need more resources and you keep upgrading and upgrading and you're overpaying for things that you're not using except of that. This is the idea for today. Perfect. And it's that I, I can totally sympathize with that because that kind of thing happens all the time. And especially how to describe it. I think this is an area where you can be massively confused because if you're not really into the technology behind a website and you don't understand what CPU is and all of that kind of stuff, I think it's really easy to, to just be persuaded that you must upgrade. It's you need right because that just seems like the sensible thing. Well, something's wrong. I'm being I'm, I'm being advised that maybe an upgrade would be the correct way to go, and perhaps that isn't always the the best way to go. So, oh, great, great idea, Sabrina, loving it. Okay. I just, you, you just mentioned, Nathan, that uh, when you don't really uh, know what's going on, you can be persuaded. And I see this happening often, uh, that website has a temporarily technical issue, a temporarily bottleneck. Uh, for example, server is crashing or database server is crashing. And hosting, hosting provider advice in this case Often, often, just you don't, you don't, you just don't need enough resources. You need to upgrade, and they don't explain what does that mean. Uh, often, you do need to upgrade just to keep your website functioning. Then you need, after you upgrade it, then you need to investigate what was causing the issue, right? Fix it and downgrade. Uh, I had uh, a client. Um, in February last year, on 14th of February on St. Valentine's Day, we were doing this work. They up, uh, had to uh, upgrade to the tier on WP Engine that costs $3,000. Um, uh, $3, 3050 
per month. Wow, um, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> that's really a lot. Yeah, and uh, also what I what I'm just obliged to say that WP Engine in that case they were very understanding. They said uh, we will upgrade you for free for a month from your current plan to this plan. Their car, their previous plan was high, very expensive as well, uh, very expensive as well. But they upgraded to the next plan, plan which is three thousand, for free for a month because we understand that you might need to uh, investigate what's happening and if you will be able to downgrade after, uh, we will give you this month for free. That was very nice of them. But I don't really see this often. So, and that client, they um, had uh, issues with their WooCommerce uh, installation. And there was, um, because of the way how their custom theme was um, coded, their usual WooCommerce website became very, very slow. And every action made on that website required a lot of resources from the server. That's mm -hmm. why they needed to, up, to to upgrade. And we had these months to investigate and to fix, to find and to fix what was the bottleneck. And um, I just want um, to give, to recommend a tool that uh, without which it wouldn't be possible to do. We used New Relic for that. And I always recommend this tool to use. A lot of hosting providers provide a new relic connection in their um, hosting panels. But if uh, your certain hosting provider doesn't provide, there are ways to install it uh, uh, even without, like, directly on the server. This is a very cool tool. Um, it basically, what it does, it shows in very, very small detail exactly what is happening what so when someone is opening the page when someone is clicking the the um link for example add to the cart uh if um someone clicked add to the cart i can track down all the hooks all the actions everything that happened after that um uh, action and i am able to see uh how much time each and every action took what each action fired uh, next because you know when you click add to the cart button for example it's not one action happening it's a bunch of actions happening and then those that bunch of actions are calling other actions into 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 the game and uh, using your relic you can track um, what was happening what was called how much time it took and where exactly and for which users because um it's important to know um what the user um role and cart and previous orders were for that case for example it was very tricky to investigate because the um slowness this bottleneck happened on the website not for all users uh, it was very hard to catch it. And without New Relic, I don't know, I, I really don't know how we would be doing this. Uh, it was hard to catch it because this bottleneck was happening only for users that were having a lot of previous orders in their account. It was a commerce huh. website selling uh, downloadable products. And um with downloadable products you don't want your users to pay second time for the same product oh then, okay yeah 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 and there were users there that bought um before they bought um thousand two thousand uh of products so whenever that user click at to the card, uh, add to card button. There are a lot of checks happening if they have bought this product before, so that if in case they bought that product before, right. we won't be allowing them. And uh, I just jumped a little bit with this story because in it, that was 
our our fix number one. That's what we fixed. Uh, but initially, it wasn't like that. Uh, initially, when the page was loaded, it's normal thing. When the page is loaded, it was checking if that users bought it before. And in case the user bought it before, uh, the add to cart button wasn't available. And the um, tricky thing is also that one product had a lot of variations. So one page would be doing checks for each and every variation for this mm, customer to check if it's available for them. And it wasn't a problem at all for most of the users, but that specific website, they had quite a few users who had 2,000 orders before. That's a lot of and checking. That is a lot of checking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And also the theme was done in the wrong way. So it's already a very heavy thing. In, in WooCommerce, it's not done in an efficient way. And then there are those people who have lots of um, downloads, uh, order, previous orders. And what WooCommerce does, it takes the database of all orders first in each order of this user is taking it's taking the product and then it compares the list of this product with the ids that we have on this page and uh, this uh, i understand this is not what is happening on each and every website but to investigate um tricky cases like this uh new relic is the tool that i recommend so how does um, it actually give you that? How did it give you that insight? Does it literally explain that to you? Is it it works that it's, out on? <laughs> it's it's a huge huge table, uh, like you can click down and down and down and go down to the through the rabbit hole of each action. Yeah. So you, you can click the uh, page, for example. You can open the page. If it wasn't pri private information, I would open it and show right yeah, now. No, but it's I fine, it's fine, 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 fine. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you can open, let's see what was happening. You can see there what was happening in, in the last five minutes. And then you have URLs with um, uh, arguments in the query stream. Yep. Um, what was called exactly? You're clicking on that URL, and then you can see all actions that were happening on that URL, all actions. And then you can click on certain action, and you can see what that action um, caused, what it called, uh, what, uh, what happened after that action happened. Right. And you can go down and down and down um it's like a huge huge tree that you can go down to the levels right and um there is a lot of information there but it's all in a uh, visual way it's structurized nicely so you can identify okay this is slow this is slow this is slow let's go down and check why it is slow that's what it does it's really incredible. That's a mm -hmm. that's a pretty impressive tool. I did actually share it on the screen, but I'll I'll share it one more time. So it's uh -huh. new relic. Um, it's newrelic.com, and we just had a little scan through the uh, the bits and pieces on the screen there. Okay, so that's great. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, keep sorry. Yep, sorry to interrupt. Uh, keep going. Yeah. Uh, so and I see that we have a uh, comment from Mike here, and. Uh, I, uh, I think we should um, start with this because I started <laughs> with exciting things, but mm. we can start with this, actually. The difference between physical memory usage, disk usage, and file usage. By the way, if uh, this is for anyone who is watching us right now, if you're watching us right now, please mm. drop a line, say hi. We would be uh, pleased to know that you're watching and this is useful. Say hi to us. Mm. So in, in this case, in the case that I've just described, it was the question of um, uh, memory usage and um, server, uh, server CPU, CPU usage. Uh, and we had to upgrade for those resources. We didn't need the um, disk usage. There were not... Um, there was not growing uh, number of files or backups or anything. That's what wasn't what we needed. We needed CPU and memory for that. And 
<laughs> finishing the story about that client, we fixed that. And they went uh, from that $3,050 per month plan to $400. Four hundred dollars plan. I Good job, <laughs> Sabrina. So you you earned crazy. your money, didn't you? That's great. You you made yeah. them very yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it it was very rewarding. Like um, very cool uh, case. Um, so this was about um, um, resources usage, and the moral of this story is that if you have a sudden spike uh, in uh, your server resources usage and your hosting provider is telling you that you need to upgrade your plan, this might be the case uh, that you need to upgrade your, your plan, but it also might be needed only temporarily. If you, when you upgrade your plan, try to investigate why that happened. Usually it, if it's, um, uh, if you didn't have any traffic spikes, if you didn't have anything changed much on your website, and uh, it might be not necessary for you to stick with higher tier, it, you might be able to discover processes that are causing this higher resources usage and downgrade back. This is the <laughs> advice. That's good advice. It's certainly in the case that you mentioned, that that was really good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good thing about New Relic also, because uh, with that site, for example, they didn't have New Relic activated when I came in. But good thing with New Relic that once you activate it, it starts gathering information um, right away and uh, depends on when your issue will happen for us it was um it was about 11 hours before we saw what was happening there okay. because as i said it um, uh, only happened for certain users and when it happened for those users it was hanging hanging um down uh all um like it was stopping all processes. So yeah. one user with a lot of downloads requested certain action and it was stopping uh, the entire pipeline for everyone else. That's so you how... needed one of those users to sort of come along and use the website. Yes. So in exactly. theory, that could have been any amount of time. It could have been weeks yeah. until yeah. somebody yeah. did that again. Okay, but you got lucky. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. This was about uh, our uh, server resources. And just to add to that, uh, in this case, it was related to, first, it was three things. Um, WooCommerce doesn't, hand, ha doesn't handle this specific part, checking the uh, availability of downloadable pro products. It doesn't do it in an efficient way. This was the first part that contributed. The second part was the poorly uh, coded custom theme. And the third part was that that website got lucky to have clients who made that many orders to just have enough impact. So that three, th these three, they kind of come together and yeah well you and, got lucky as well that they happened to be there when you put new relic on it because <laughs> yeah that could have been uh you might not have spotted anything uh mm -hmm. and then it would have looked like you you hadn't done your job or you didn't know exactly what was going on so that's oh well done <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so for that side it was these three things but it can be something else for example, it can be something happening uh, by cron events, scheduled events that are happening usually on your website. For example, making uh, the most prominent example that I can think of is on the websites that have something posted on schedule. And uh -huh. uh, on uh, on the news websites, for example, they uh, plan their posting beforehand and Sometimes before posting, they synchronize with something else. Oh, they yeah. grab information from, yeah. from somewhere else. Sometimes this happens on multi site, and like mm, the process of um, 
and and this is saved uh, for uh, as cron job as scheduled event um on my website i have a if someone who is watching us uh, for them this is a case i have a um, uh, article on my website uh, that is called um, cron for um, multi site for, for high loaded multi site networks okay so if uh, someone who is watching us has this problem the, you can find some answers in that uh, article how to make this scheduled events on multi site when um uh when this event requires a lot of resources um and it happens on a regular basis how to optimize it for performance um your website so, by the way just to be just i guess give, give you a <laughs> plug for that it's sabrinazidan.com mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah okay great so it might be the, the it might be one factor it might be a combination of factors uh, that is slowing down your back end and causing you to upgrade to the higher uh, plan i don't think i don't think that i have ever seen the website that would need something over $500 plan uh, if it's optimized well, like I think those sites exist, they do exist, but for most people who are paying something over that, it just means that your backend is not optimized well. That's why you are paying that much. Yeah, so that's that's a really good point as well, because obviously every business wants to be agile and they want to be lean. And, uh, you know, if you're in charge of a website and the bill is going bananas, listen to Sabrina's advice. It might be worth getting somebody like Sabrina in to take a look at it because it may be that you could save thousands, potentially, of dollars a year just by doing some remedial work and using tools like New Relic, like you just mentioned. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, here is I, you. Ju you just said hi, someone like Sabrina, and I immediately had uh, this idea: what you can do yourself, without even hiring someone. What yeah. you can do yourself to investigate why is it so the easiest, the easiest way um, to investigate what is what is happening is just to pick time uh, on your website when there are not a lot of uh, visitors there. Nighttime, obviously, uh, um, maybe 3 p 3 a.m., 4 a.m., wherever you're not sleeping. Just pick that time and do this basic recommendation. Switch to default theme, turn off your plugins, and try enabling one by one and switch. Like, first you uh, disable all plugins, then you switch to default theme. Uh, you are now on WordPress only. If the issue uh, still there, well, you have the answer. It's not plugin. It's not theme. It's something inside WordPress install. It's something that is happening somewhere in WordPress install. Most likely, this something has nothing to do with WordPress install itself in this case, because uh, it might be someone, it might be some developer who put stuff where it shouldn't go mm -hmm. because um 99 of cases if you switch off uh to default theme and uh, deactivate all plugins you will see that your website is fast if it's not happening probably there is something is going wrong with your installation in general then if it's fine try to activate your theme first, see how it changes. Then activate plugins one by one, see how it changes. Um, and you will be able to uh, to understand what is adding to this slowness. While doing this, it's a good idea to have query monitor on. And you will see this, we were talking about query monitor in our previous episode, by the way. And you will see on the screen the numbers um showing you how many queries are made and how long this um how long uh this page took to to uh get, took to get loaded and this way 
without hiring anyone, without doing any any complicated moves, you might be able to figure out that this is specific plugin that causes these bottlenecks. You might be able to uh, turn on everything back except of that plugin and if this is true, this is the answer. This plugin is slowing, is slowing the website down. And then, depending on the situation, uh, if you can substitute it quickly and painlessly with something else, for example, you just use it, used it for one thing and you can substitute it easily, probably it makes sense just to substitute it with something else. If it's plugin that it's... Um, deeply incorporated into into your website um, architecture and design and functionality, then you might need to take steps further. But this is the simplest um, steps you can take to investigate where, where the bottleneck is. Query Monitor, by the way, is at querymonitor.com. It really is just a holding page for the link to the repo. They're, uh, they're not trying to upsell you anything. Uh, but there you go, querymonitor.com. Uh, we'll link, I think that's a direct link straight. Yeah, there's a little download tab at the top, which takes you directly to wordpress.org where you can get it for free. Very cool. Mm-hmm. We have a couple of questions if you want to um, want to take those. So thank you for those, Mike, for a start. So Nero says, so this is a question directed towards you, uh, Sabrina. I don't know if you want to deal with this one now or later, but it says, as well as your client do you feedback to plugin developers to help improve plugins so if so that's asking you about work really <laughs> which is nice uh do you do that kind of thing yeah i do i do that and i will explain when i don't do this and when i do this um if i see that the plugin is just in general in general poorly written and it's not one single thing, I would probably not contact developers. I would just, <laughs> I would just try to avoid that plugin by all means. But oh, I see. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, if it's something that may may be not done in a good way, but in general, plugin is fine. I almost sure will contact them and tell them, okay, uh, here is the situation that my client has. Here is uh, what we found out. Here is usually I already would fix that um, by that time. Here is how we fixed it temporarily on our client's website. Here is how I, I can suggest you to fix it. And in many cases, it works uh, because if you come with someone with complaining um, about their work yeah. and suggest yeah. solution to fix it. It's so much easier to fix it when you already have a solution because if you just complain that something, and also if you provide detailed information um, for the team to replicate the um, problem, it would be so much faster to to fix this. I often do this with um, plugin developers who um, who are related to anything ads related, uh, anything for displaying ads and rotating and all that stuff. I would say that that niche of plugin developers, they are very, very responsive to such things. They are very quick to react. They are very responsive, probably because the clients that are um, uh, using um, their plugins, they know exactly what they are missing on their revenue when something is not right. Because yeah. those sites yeah. are making money with the content. You yeah, know? that's a good point. So yeah, in some situations, in many situations, you will. And obviously, by doing that, you help the rest of us out. Um, because the plugin developers get to know the your thoughts. So that's nice to know. So thank you, Nero. And then we have a comment. I don't know who this is because uh, they are, it's anonymized, but it says great advice. Would, this, would that mean it's your hosting? So I think probably that comment dropped at the point where you were talking about uh, disabling themes, except the default theme and disabling plugins. 
and then figuring out, okay, it's either WordPress at this point or it's hosting. Or and I guess, hosting. yeah, yeah. If you if you put a new vanilla version of WordPress in, and you know for a fact that there's nothing weird going on, because there's always the possibility that something has been hijacked in your you know security that- related. Um, but yeah, at that point, it's yeah, the this is very good question because I didn't describe that in a detail. So uh, you uh, switched to default theme, you deactivated all plugins, and now you can see that with everything deactivated, your website it's, is still slow. It might mean that it's something with your hosting, or it might mean that uh, it's something with your WordPress install. And next step would be, as Nathan just said, uh, try to install vanilla WordPress if you have the opportunity to add another website uh, on this very hosting panel. Just install next to your existing one. Uh, Install new WordPress installation, absolutely new from scratch, without anything. Try speed there. If it's fast, it means something is wrong with installation, right. not with the um, with the hosting. I know that many people would advise just contact your hosting provider. I don't know, maybe it's my <laughs> bad luck, but I feel I just can't remember when I contacted hosting provider with the issue, and it was quick and uh, painless. <laughs> Yeah. to resolve because usually I contact hosting providers when I already know the issue and I'm asking, for example, I found out the issue, I know the issue, I know how to fix it and I'm asking hosting provider, okay guys, here is the issue, here is how I want to fix it, but I can't figure out on your exact uh, server or on your exact uh, hosting panel, I can't figure out how to do this. And I'm asking them very specific questions and it takes a lot of time to answer. I can't imagine like uh, if you just tell them my website is slow, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where you come in, Sabrina. That's yeah. that's your role. That's that, why we have people like you. That, that's that's right, yeah. But yeah, before that, you can go this uh, through this process and just maybe... Maybe you are lucky and you will be able to figure out what's what's slowing down your website uh, on your own and quickly and painlessly. Nice. Mm-hmm. You had another sure. resource that you wanted to share as well, didn't you? Something that you had put together. I don't know if you want to do that now or... Yeah, I sent you a link and that uh-huh. was uh, our second part because we were talking about server sources uh, such as CPU and memory. But then there is often a situation when you have to upgrade to the higher tier because you need more space on the server. You don't need more resources uh, in terms of um, power, but you need more storage. And um, I've had quite a few clients that were upgrading and upgrading and upgrading continuously because their storage was growing. Um, larger and larger and larger because of the nature of the websites that they ha- that they had. So what to do in this case? If you need to constantly upgrade because your storage space is running low and like mm, every now and then, mm-hmm. what to do? First thing that needs to be done is to uh, identify if it's a bug or a feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so is it a coincidence? Like, is it the files that you need and you really need them and they are growing larger in size and you just have no option but to keep them? Um, I'll talk about how to keep them in two minutes, but before you decide that you need to keep all that that you have on your website, you need to figure out if this is what you really need. What can be a part of that growing space? The first, like, number one, it's backups. Um, You might be having backups from different providers 
without even knowing it, and they might be stored on his server. I saw a website like a month ago. Um, it had three backup system on their uh, hosting. Okay. Um, a, a hosting provider was making uh, everyday backup, full backup. And then they had two plugins installed to make backups as well. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, that's but, a lot of backups. That's a lot of backups. <laughs> Quickly but grows. You know, but you know what is the funniest thing? Like, it's not only uh, three backups that are saved. Um, oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> They're backing up the backups. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so oh, it gets exponentially bigger. Every day it's worse. Oh, no. Oh, good grief. Because it's buried in the file structure of WordPress and that file hasn't been, uh, exactly. I, like, there's, it's not on a blacklist of don't back this up. So it's right. making exactly. a backup, then backing up WordPress plus the backup from yesterday. Well, and from the next yesterday, day it does it, it's and doing it, and then two more. Two <laughs> makes backup. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not funny. But it is quite funny. It's not funny, but it's so funny. <laughs> but even a tiny, teeny, tiny WordPress website would let that run for three stuff. days, four yeah. days, and suddenly you are you're into the gigabytes and gigabytes territory, yeah. aren't you? Wow. <laughs> that you see, that's just burning through cash, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not good for the environment either, because you're just sending bits all over the planet that have no reason to exist. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry if I interrupted. That was a good story, I just, though. I like that. I just love stories like this yeah. because yeah. this is so easy, so easy to identify and fix. This is like, you know, they had a huge problem that I come in. I fixed this huge problem in 20 minutes. Yeah, well, it was, it was a huge problem, but yeah. it required one click of a button to, yeah, <laughs> to make yeah, it go to, away to, oh. to, to figure out what's happening this is so rare because uh my daily job you know nathan my da daily job is to speed up wordpress websites and to find bottlenecks and usually i spend like 90 percent of my time to finding bottlenecks to figuring out what's going on and then 10 percent of the time or just fixing it it's easy when you know what you need to fix and when things like these happen, oh, this is so such good days. <laughs> yeah, you feel like a superhero because you just right. rock in and sort of say, "Oh, well, done." Yeah. Right. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's this great. One example, like backups, it's so basic; it's uh, very easy to check. Uh, this can be one example why uh, your website is growing large. Another example. Uh, it can be something might have go gone wrong with the plugins that you are using, uh, like in uh, in normal situation they would be behaving one way, and in not normal situation they might be behaving in a weird way, mm -hmm. and especially with uh, plugins that are um, uh, supposed uh, that. Um, created to improve your performance. Uh, for example, plugins that um, create uh, page cache or create, for example, used uh, CS uh, CSS bits or store something. S some things might have gone wrong there. But to check that, it's easy as well. Uh, you're just checking um, what... Um, directories in your on your server uh, are taking place uh, you are investigating why they are taking this place and this is it so these cases are very easy to check this are uh, this case is easy to fix uh, because it's really bugs it's really um, things that need to be fixed right but then there are other cases when it's not a bug and it's stuff that you need, it's stuff that you think you need to keep. For example, okay. your media. Yep. Yep. You might be thinking that you need all that media, but in fact, you might be not needing it. And for example, 
basic example that would fit most of WordPress websites is when you so uh, when you upload any image to WordPress, WordPress would create thumbnails which has a name that might be misleading for not native speakers as me, for example, um, because in my uh, head thumbnails it's small. Uh, the small um, version of large image, mm -hmm. but in WordPress thumbnail, it's any um, version of original image. Right, and right. If you have, for example, um, three sizes set in your WordPress install, and then you have WooCommerce that adds its own thumbnail size, and then you have a couple of plugins that add their thumbnail si uh, size as well, you might find out that one single image that you uploaded to your WordPress um, for, uh, leads to generation of 20 more yeah. images yeah. from it of different sizes for different uh, screen sizes and usage and so on and so forth. Most likely, <laughs> half or even more of those are not used. It's kind of weird in a way that that, that isn't handled in core, that there isn't a way of seeing all of that uh, stuff in core, if you know what I mean. Like every time you create an image, that there isn't some sort of check to say, do you want to create all these other images? And I know that there's ways of doing that, but I always thought it was curious when I first found WordPress that that was going on. Uh, I didn't know that that was going on at the beginning, and it took somebody like you to tell me. And then I was like, okay, right, really? Every time? All right, okay. Yeah. And you heap on a lot of other plugins. Like you said, WooCommerce and various other, I don't know, image um, compression plugins and things like that. Yeah. They'll make other different versions, and whether or not they get rid of the original one or just keep it just in case, there's a lot going. And it, it's especially images, it's megabytes and megabytes often. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, mm -hmm. I interrupted. You know, I'm thinking what you said that wouldn't it be nice to have this information when you're uploading an image? Probably it would be nice to have it listed. That That's what I mean, just file... showing you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this uh, action will generate 25 more images, just so you know. Right, and exactly. Yeah. Up to you to take any action on this or not. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, maybe. I bet there's I bet there's something somewhere already out there in the wild that mm -hmm. does explain exactly that as you're doing it, some little mm -hmm. nice nice feature yeah. plugin somewhere. But uh, yeah, anyway, sorry, interrupted. So okay, images can be responsible. Nathan, you know what the problem with performance is that such plugin that would uh, you install plugin that would tell you these. But if you installed plugin for this, you are not the one who needs to be told about this. Yeah, yeah. right. You know that it's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you cared to install yeah. plugin to, yeah. to you know about this yeah. thing, but I think this is really a good idea to have this in the core. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. It should be in core. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is one. Uh, this is one source of our growing. Uh, file database, versions of images. Also, if you're installing, as you mentioned, uh, a compression plugin, it might be generating WebP version for you, and it will be generating WebP version for every version of the image that you had. So you uploaded image. And it's image. like the backups from a minute ago. You create one image, all of a sudden you've got 25 from one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> it's fractal, right? Cauliflower yeah. is fractal. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of clever work being done by people like Cloudflare to um, to render images on the edge, and right. you know they right. just serve up exactly what you need, more what or less at the need moment you need it. Exactly. Yeah. So for this case, what you can do, uh, you can mm, no <laughs> before. Uh, I wanted to say that you you can first offload your images somewhere so it doesn't take the place on your server yep. or use Cloudflare or um, Cloudinary or anything else to do that. But the fact 
the, the, the problem is that even if you offload it somewhere, there are tons of images that has yeah. already been created. You won't get rid of that. Um, the link that I sent to you before, Nathan, if you can have it on the screen, this we is can. the link to the post uh, on my website, um, how to delete unused uh, everything, attachments, media, uh, everything uh, that you need to delete uh, on your website. Mm, there are a few cases I described there. Uh, maybe that one of the cases uh, would fit your um, situation. This is for someone who is watching us. Um, so this is the second, the the the, the second, the second <clears throat> most uh, popular space eating um, issue on the website that images that you really need are created in multiple uh, in multiple multiple versions and they're eating up the um, server not not server but disk space uh -huh. uh, on your um, hosting plan but also there can be another situation and I have this example uh, I'm doing this right now for uh, for a client, it can be another situation with news websites, for example. Uh, imagine a news website with um, thousand, hundred, hundred thousand of posts of news, right? Uh, that are already there. Most of those news are not relevant anymore. Yeah. Um, you need, but some posts and some news still have traffic because news websites, they're making money on traffic. So for this case, if, and uh, every single news, you, sorry, news, uh, every single post with news. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every single post has its own images, right? So there are um, hundred of thousands posts on your news portal that are eating up space. What can you do in this situation? I'm working for the client on this right now. In this situation, you can get rid of what is not bringing you money. You can uh, delete posts that are not bringing any traffic anymore, Any uh, are not bringing any revenue anymore. No one is visiting them. For that, for this case, for example, what I'm doing, I'm grabbing information from Google Analytics and I'm looking at the last uh, 60 days. If there were no visit to the certain URL, I have this URL saved uh, in a separate place or in text file. Okay. And after that, and this is done on Cron uh, every day. And um, after it's saved there, then another task will grab that files or that file with the list of URLs that no one has visited for the last 60 days, and they're absolutely useless on our website. They are not bringing us anything, but they're just they just eating space and resources from our WordPress. And another script will take the list of these URLs, delete the post and delete the media, not only Ooh. attachments, but okay. also delete the media related to that post. Uh, and this way, the database, the server space, the server resources, they can be kept um, lean. They can be uh, kept uh, in a good shape. Even for large websites, use websites with a database that is supposed to be huge. It's four minutes to I know, five. I know. I was just looking at the time thinking, what the heck? How did that happen again? <laughs> like a whole hour went. <laughs> but um, just about your point there, that was a really interesting solution, by the way. So poll the website for a month. If something's not being used, classify it as it's worthy of being in a deleted state or a draft state, then if that continues to be the case, after a month, delete it, but also find the the media that was attached to that and mm -hmm. delete that as well. I guess yeah. I guess there's some scenarios where you don't want that to happen. Obviously, if you're, you know, of let's course. say you, you are a I news site. I wouldn't do it on my website. Yeah, so like a news <laughs> site or something. 
yeah, it might yeah. be important to keep that record. You know, if, you, if you're the only news source in the area where you live, it might be really useful to have that f for posterity, you know, in the same way that we still look at manuscripts from thousands of years ago because it's interesting. But but if you're not, if you've just got content which is here today, gone tomorrow, that's a really yeah. useful idea. That's such a great yeah. idea. So search for things which are not being used, make them deleted, and at the same time, um, delete the media that is, that is attached to it. Just a couple of things that have come in. Uh, firstly, Mike is saying he's just checked the physical memory usage of, I guess, a site. I don't know if it's his mm. own site or what have you. And it's peaking at 100%. He's worried. So you know where to go, don't you, uh, Mike? You can go to <laughs> you can go to Sabrina Zidane dot com mm. and uh, reach out to Sabrina. You never know; she yeah. might be able to uh, to get something going with you. But also, uh, what else have we got? Uh, so, oh, H Henriette uh, said, "Can we have the link in the chat?" So I did that. Hopefully, you found. It. Oh, you did. You did find it because I posted the link, and then uh, that was the one on your website. And then thank you. And then Cami. Cami, uh, Cami McNamara. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, saying she's enjoying it so much. Great. That's great. Mm -hmm. We are going to have to, as we say in the UK, knock it on the head because I, I have to disappear in about 10 minutes and go off and do things with my family this evening. So uh, I guess it only remains for me to say, firstly, thank you so much, Sabrina. As always, a really interesting chat. Uh, Really interesting. I'm just going to put the URL for the the submission of your site because if you are watching this at some point, not mm -hmm. when it's live, um, and you miss this bit, please go and submit your site, wpbuilds.com forward slash speed. There's a quick form, two minutes, three minutes, less, a minute, depending on how quick you are at typing. Uh, go and fill that form out, and you never know. Sabrina might be looking at your website the next time we do this. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Sabrina, before we... Disappear? And next time we are doing this, it's next Thursday, this very same time. Uh, we would love to have some websites submitted. You see how nice we are. We're not just going to say anything bad about your website. We will just <laughs> <laughs> try to identify bottlenecks and help you out. Yeah. Uh, you're, at least you're nice. I can't speak for myself, but I, you're, you're nice. So that's good. 50% of the combination is very nice. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Sabrina. We'll be back this time next week. So it'll be 3 p.m. UK time, uh, wherever that is where you are in the world. You can figure that out, I'm sure, uh, at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. So we will we will end it there. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for joining us today. Really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, everyone. Good joined. Bye. Bye-bye.